Welcome to the next installment of Snackable Content on the Presenio HR Expert Hub. Today I have joining me Sophie Thien, who is the Chief People Officer at Oakham, a digital microlender that helps people achieve their financial goals with accessible financing. Sophie's a leader in the HR community and very focused on mental health in the workplace. Today she's going to share some insights on how HR can successfully champion mental health at work. Welcome Sophie and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited about talking um, you know, specifically in this topic as well. Well, great. I'll, I'll just start with the first question then. As a financial services organization that offers microloans, are there any unique challenges you have from a mental health perspective? Um, if you were to specifically um, look at just mental health, I think, I think we can go a bit more general and generic on this point, given the fact that we are a micro lender, especially in this micro space, I think it's important to first recognize who are our customers. And because of that, that also obviously, you know, relate to the people that we hire. And so because of that, as a general, our company, um, especially on our cultural values, one key thing that points out and one key thing that also attracted me to the company is the, is the emphasis on um, empathy. In, in the culture. And it's one of those things that are so important because I have been around in the fintech industry for a number of years. I wouldn't say that long. So, you know, six months ago when I've decided, seven months now, seven months ago, um, decided to come into Oakham, it was so different and so fresh for me. It's because I've always wanted to do HR because um, there, there's this thing about wanting to help as many people as possible. And I feel like that's very rewarding for myself. I take it on as a, as, as a personal challenge um, and there's a lot of satisfaction doing that. And so because of that, I thoroughly enjoy doing HR. But coming into an environment like this has actually been a lot more rewarding than I have expected. It's because the whole culture is about helping. It's because when you're on the phones on a daily basis or, or talking, or even like for myself to talk to our collections team, the customers that they speak to are usually in dire, uh, need a dire help. And, and that's the reality. And so because of that, there's this general consensus in the company that if you don't have the resilience and actually are able to relate to their pain, then it becomes very difficult for you to actually serve those clients. You know, in, in, in a nutshell, like, mental health and that's why it's so important in this company specifically because of who we serve. Well that tees up my, my next question which is what are some of the red flags you look out for when it comes to mental health? Yeah for sure so um, I am a mental health coach so I you know I've got I've got the privilege to actually be able to you know sense the red flags or see it from a mile away but at the same time I feel like it's my responsibility to to ensure that I continue to educate the company um, so that everyone else is aware because you know sometimes when you think about it like you're one person and there's only that many you can help but you know if you expand this and create a following then you're in hopes of being able to actually spread this education and awareness and so therefore hopefully it touches more people's lives. So some of the main red flags that we have seen in the company is definitely, um, you know, on the contrary of a normal fintech, we don't see burnout, but we do see mental burnout. When I say the mental burnout, it isn't about like, oh, we've got aggressive targets, we've got, you know, um, uh, um, firm deadlines, um, we're trying to push too many features out and things like that, but it's actually not. It's the mental burnout of having, not a lot of people are able to build that kind of resilience when you're speaking in a very emotional term. The, the main red flags we normally see are like people emotionally burnt out is because they've been talking to um, customers who, who just really are going through um, a lot of difficulties in their life. And so, you know, when you're sitting on the other, on the other side of the fence and you go, well, I kind of got it lucky, didn't I? And so it becomes, uh, it becomes really tense, taxing for their mental health. Um, it, sometimes they do, they do need to, you know, from time to time, they do need to take a break. Or, you know, there are times where you just get really disgruntled customers, but not because they have, they, they personally have a person of vendetta against you, you know, you've never met them before. But in reality, you know, a lot of people react in a, in a very defensive way um, when they're under a lot of stress. And so our customer service or our agents do get the hand of being, um, uh, being on the other, like being on the receiving end of it. So that mental health, uh, the, the mental burnout is definitely 
the, the main red flag that we see. And obviously, like everything else just, you know, just comes with it because it will start affecting their performance. Maybe they're absent and they're not motivated anymore. And, and so, you know, even, even when we talk about like um, redesigning our rewards uh, program or our recognition program in, in the company or our strategy, it still comes down to making a, actually the main priority is to make sure that they're health, uh, mentally healthy before we can start recognizing their hard work. What are some of the most effective strategies you could recommend uh, to other organizations for promoting mental health? Yeah, um, so we, there are a couple of things that we do. Um, this is part and parcel from um, like my personal passion, um, my leadership's passion as well, and making sure like we're taking care of the people appropriately. Um, at the same time, the team I have, I, I have to say I'm really lucky because they, they, generally, like, they generally want to help. And, and it's, it's a great environment to be in that way. And so I kind of feel like this is not just all on me. I can, you know, we can, we can talk about collaboratively designing programs to support people. So for example, in the, in, in the company right now, um, we run two types of um, two, actually twice a week, two types of um, support programs or, or a support group. So we have a mental health support group which basically anybody um, will, just, will just dial in. It's sent out to all of the company. Um, they, they get to dial in. Sometimes some people just feel like they want to be in the call, observe, listen to other people, but some people are specifically there to really talk about their feelings and how they're feeling specifically about like, you know, maybe you've had a really bad week. Um, and it's the mental health support group is normally, um, normally used to help uh, agents who have a distress week with a customer or, or um, um, that way. And so this becomes their open space, but also their safe space. And we set the boundaries really clearly. We say anything that you share in this group is never going to be shared outside. And we make a commitment and promise to ourselves. So you can imagine when this didn't exist before and when we first launched it, it sort of felt like a lot of people were taken aback because they felt, oh, is this going, one of, one of the biggest stigma in, in mental health is, is, is not just about the negativity of that reflection, but it's also, if I talk about this with, with anybody in my company, is that a direct reflection of my performance or, or am I not going to do well? And that prohibits people from actually, you know, being able to speak up. And this is one of the things we really need to educate people around. And so having that mental, um, uh, mental health support group really helped them come out of the shell, become a lot more confident and comfortable in really sharing the experience. It's because they just never know that actually, you know, the same person sitting right next to them had, had the exact same experience that week. And they were never, without that group, they were never going to know and they wouldn't be able to help each other uh, in that situation. And so we give a lot of autonomy back um, to, to them and actually own that challenge and help resolve that challenge themselves. Then on the other hand, we also have another support group, which is mainly more of a work support group. So this work support group is purely based on do you want to talk about anything confidential um, um, with or without HR in the room, really, right? Um, to talk about anything uh, confidential that is, um, you know, conflicts with your, with your peers. Um, maybe, you know, you have a manager that you don't quite get along with, but, you know, you're not at that stage where you want to resign or quit your job or think that you're not doing well, but you would like some pointers of like, hey, you know what, I've heard you also used to work with this, this manager. I'm new in the team. I would just like to really, you know, get a few tips and pointers on how to navigate because I don't feel like personality wise, we, we were so similar. And you know, this is a very common situation. Like people shy away from talking about it, which I don't understand why, but it's very natural. You're never going to be able to, you know, go into an interview, score a job and be like, that manager is who I want to work with for the rest of my life. You, you, tr you figure this out along the way. And so we've decided that we need to create this group is because first and foremost, I've always seen how HR had failed to identify these signs um, at a very early stage is because they wear the HR hat. I don't need people to come to me and tell me about their issues because they 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 want to officially raise a grievance or or this is an you know this is this is a claim about someone being bullied or discriminated in the company. I want to create the the open space and the safe space for people to start recognizing those signs at a very early stage and then be able to actually either draw from their peers' experience or resolve this as early as possible so we don't have a disgruntled lever. So 
in that way, we've definitely seen, you know, engagement has increased. People feel a lot more comfortable speaking about um, their issues. Even sometimes, you know what? It's not just about speaking about issues. It's about like being given, giving them that open space and that confidence to be like, hey, you know what? I've got a great manager this week. Never realized this before. Really want to use this opportunity to say, without my manager's support, I wouldn't have been able to go through my personal matters. And that's very important. And that's one of the key things of, you know, people forgetting, especially in HR thinking, when you're thinking about recognition, it just means, oh, let's give them Amazon gift cards. Let's give them more pay rises. Let's give them, you know, career development. But hey, fundamentally, if you're not mentally positive about doing your job, everything else becomes fluff. And so what we were really trying to create is the environment for people to be naturally comfortable and drive this culture forward. I love how it's not just looking for things that need to be fixed, but also looking for things to celebrate. I think that that's fantastic. Thank you, Sophie, for joining me today. Everyone, please check out the Personio HR Expert Hub for more information and interviews.